And we've got a special a guest here. Today. What? All this has happened in just 10 minutes. There we heard it. Booster landing burn shut down. Off, go Super Heavy, go Starship. Thanks for all the historic flights, Pad 1. Vehicles catching downrange. Booster Raptor chamber pressure nominal. Booster and ship, nominal power and telemetry. All right, we are about 45 seconds into flight. We're still getting the rattle here at Star Factory. We are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it arcs across the Gulf. Coming up next on Max Q. Right, so, so at this point, we've passed through that period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. The next thing we're looking forward to is going to be hot staging. So we've got 33 out of 33 Raptors lit. Super Heavy makes its way uphill. Hot staging is going to be coming up uh, in just a little over a minute. At that point, we're going to see all but three of those Raptor engines on Super Heavy shut down. Our version of Miko, uh, most engines cut off instead of main engine. And then after that, we're going to release the clamps that are currently holding Starship to that hot stage adapter. It's then going to ignite its six Raptor engines to push it away from Super Heavy and then start making its flight uphill. So in about 30 seconds, we're going to see the engine start to shut down on Super Heavy. You'll see them kind of shut off in separate banks until we've just got those three center engines that never stop running for this process and then looking for six ship raptors. All right, successful hot staging maneuver. So we've got 12 of the 13 engines lit back up on boosters, so it's doing its boost back. Real, real excitingly ship, though, we've got six out of six Raptors lit on ship there. So it's now gonna continue to make its ascent into outer space. Meanwhile, this boost back is happening. We're using those 13 engines. Uh, so everything, well, 12 out of the 13, and then we go down to three, and then we're gonna shut down for the end of boost back. That's sending super heavy back ship towards its planned splashdown zone in the Gulf. Right after we finish this boost back burn, we're also going to separate the hot stage. This will be the final time boost that we're doing down. this. Is All right, there's the end of the boost back burn. We should be seeing the hot stage. There. So the hot stage separates. It's going to make its way down. Also splash down in the gulf. In the meantime, though, these six ship raptors are going to continue fire, firing for about five more minutes. Next up for the booster, though, is going to be its landing burn. There's a cool tracking shot. We dump some of the prop out on our way back in. All right, so for booster, this is one of the main things we're trying to get is going to be this landing burn. Oh, that's... So you can see the hot stage kind of making its way towards the very, the left side. So that's the bottom of the booster. It's about to pass right in front of where you can see some of that prop dump happening. They look like they're close together, but there's a good amount of distance between them and the hot stage will go down and splash down in the Gulf while the booster comes back for its landing burn. Starship is on nominal trajectory. All right. Looking good on our trajectory, looking good on everything. Jake and Amanda, you guys with me down there? Yeah, definitely. The crowd is, is gathering over here in the office. You can definitely feel the energy in here. Um, great to see that booster is making its way down to the splashdown zone in the Gulf. 
Yeah, the shaking down here was absolutely nuts. The windows are still there, still intact. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty awesome. But yeah, booster's coming down. We're at about 30 Booster kilometers. About. Safe. All right, yeah, and as we approach that landing, uh, just like tower catches, we will be doing a 13-engine landing burn to slow down. This time it will be in a V3 configuration. And as we're starting to get into the denser part of the atmosphere, the booster is using four hypersonic grid fins to guide itself through atmospheric entry towards its landing site. And we're just Should about 20 seconds away from landing burn start, where we'll ig first ignite the center 13 engines, then bring that down to five to slow down the booster for landing. And finally, that will come down to three, and we'll cut all of them off while we're still about 200 meters in the air. So booster is going to see a bit of a hard thing. Booster landing will start it. Booster landing burn shut down. And there we heard it. Booster landing burn shut down. We saw a 13 to 5 to 3 VP. I'm jealous of the crowd. All right, back to ship. Ship still making its way. We've got a little under two minutes left. So the next the next major milestone we're going to be looking for is Seco. That's our second stage engine cutoff. That's the three RVACs, the vacuum optimized engines shut down first, and then we'll shut down those three center engines. So we should be a little under a minute. All right, RVACs have shut off. An awesome day so far. It's crazy. All this has happened in just 10 minutes. All the objectives were met on the booster, including that V3 style landing burn. So now all eyes are on the ship as we get ready for our in space objectives. All right, looks like we got the door open. Looks like we got a little bit of movement there, Dan. Coax it out. Get it moving, Jake. There we go. All right. First one going out. All right. First one's deployed. Getting ready for the second one here. We do a little reset back to the center position. Yeah, it takes about a minute for each one. Looks real smooth, too. They made a couple of tweaks to those rails. If you watched the last ones, it had a couple of bumps on the way out, but moving out super clean this time. Yeah, and as noted earlier in the show, but definitely worth repeating, Starship will deploy Starlink's more advanced V3 satellites, adding 60 terabits per second of capacity to the network per launch. Uh, so that's 20 times more than each Falcon 9 launch does today. Just incredible. Yeah, and any, anybody that's been following Starship, you know Starlink's kind of the MVP for these flight tests where it's not only giving us the views we're seeing right now, uh, but also just real-time data through every phase of flight. So we've got a couple dozen cameras on Starship. We've also got a bunch of cameras spread across the globe, including out in the Indian Ocean where we've got our fun buoys floating. There goes another one. And I mean, we're, we're using Starlink to bring all of this together. It's our, our drone shots you see here uh, from our great team down here at Starbase, all connected. So Starlink, not only giving us cool views off the planet, but also on the planet, help bring everybody along for all these Starship flights. I think that's number four. Somebody check my math. Yeah, we've got four Starlink terminals on the outside of Starship. He uses that to talk to the Constellation. And through that, we actually get about 120 megabits of bandwidth for our downlink. That's our real-time HD video, all of our telemetry. So it's not just kind of giving us these cool views inside, 
but it's giving all that engineering data in real time, including re-entry, when normally a plasma layer builds up and blocks you out. Starlink, powerful enough of a frequency that we're able to kind of punch through that and still get that live view. All right, next one out the door. There we go. All right, yeah, Starlink is the world's largest satellite constellation operating in low Earth orbit to deliver high speed, low latency broadband internet. This provides internet access to people around the world, many of who have never had connectivity before. Oh. <laughs> right, today Starlink serves more than 150 countries, territories, and other markets, with over 7 million active customers in counting. Uh, to meet the global growing demand for high-speed internet, SpaceX expanded its factory over in Bastrop, Texas, which is just outside of Austin, and also introduced Starlink Mini, as well as an upgraded version of the Starlink Standard Kit. Yeah, and one thing to note about this satellite deploy is that they will be following the same suborbital trajectory of the ship. So these dummy sats will not be going in orbit. We do expect them to burn up on re-entry. Couple more to go. I promise one of these days we'll deploy in daylight. But we're, we're basically trading deploy in the dark so we get those re entry views uh, for the daytime. I think we got one more to go. All right, now with payload deploy complete, Starship will now close its payload door and continue to coast around Earth to the Indian Ocean. Here we go. Oh, rapid ignition. And shut down. Yeah, we're, we're looking good. I do want to remind people that we are pushing, and so do not be surprised if this is not a very smooth flight on the way down. But again, this is intentional. We are trying to find what are the limits. Yeah, Dan, it looks, you can see the, our, speed, uh, <coughs> our speed indicator in the bottom left there. It looks like we're starting to scrub off velocity a little bit quicker. Yeah, the, the sun's starting to come up again. We, ooh, there we go. There we go. Skirt is intact so far this time. If you watch Flight 10, you saw we entered with a little bit missing. That was designed to essentially be the approach that we would do on a return to launch site and a tower catch. So uh, don't be surprised if we see the ship start to turn. Yeah, and if you look in the bottom right, it looks like we've made it all the way to the Indian Ocean. We're coming up. Looks like we're getting into our bank maneuver. Ship landing startup. There's our landing burn. Three down to two. Starship has landed. As we said, we're not planning on recovering the ship today. Hey, welcome back to Earth Starship. <laughs> 